Hello. 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 All right. Um, are we ready to roll? Yes. Very good. So, uh, hello everyone. My name is Andreas Bruby, and together with my colleague Alexandra Cruz, I will lead you through this debate. We will talk about public space and we will um, discuss three of the entries to the Future Architecture Platform that deal with this topic. But first, uh, Alexandra and I will introduce a little bit ourselves, what we do and what our institutions do uh, for this year's FAP pl platform. Alexandra. Yes, hello. Thank you, Andreas. Uh, so my name is Alexandra Cruz and I am head of program at the uh, Oslo Architecture Triennale. Um, I will introduce a little bit to <coughs> those who, do, who doesn't know the, the, the organization and then um, continue with, with the idea of the, the project that we will develop uh, together with the creatives um, for 2021. So the Oslo Architecture Triennale is one of the Nordic region's largest architecture festivals. We are a members organization comprised by six main members, which are also our founding members and seven associated uh, members. They are, uh, they together, all these group of members are uh, all key organizations in architecture and uh, urbanism in Norway. Uh, our uh, target groups are um, the users of the city, architects and urban practitioners, decision makers, those who take decisions about the built environment and um, also international guests. And to connect with these uh, audience groups, we develop a program <coughs> that includes initiatives directed to the different uh, groups in collaboration with various partners and actors, and which takes form in different formats that open for architecture dissemination to broader audiences. Up to now, we have had seven triennials. Uh, the last, of, the last uh, one was in 2019, and we are now preparing the upcoming festival that will happen in 2022. Uh, we, we work with the three-year cycles, and the reason why I uh, explain this is because this involves the project that we'll be developing this year, and these three-year cycles allows us the possibility of um, deeply engaged in the teams we work with, since this is our uh, aim, uh, is to be a research and dissemination platform, which impacts, uh, goes beyond the festival itself. And the year before the Triennale, which in this case is 2021, um, we do uh, what we call a research and testing year in which we focus on identifying the main theme, the topics and questions we will be raising in the festival. Um, we, have, um, we have gotten in January 2021, a new director, Christian Pag, and uh, Christian will be um, also the main will also have the main curatorial uh, responsibility for the program of the festival in 2022. And now to the autumn program of the Triennale. So we are currently working with um, identifying, discussing what will be the theme 
the main theme for the Triennial in 2022. And, um, and these are some of the questions that we are looking into. Uh, what we share, how can architecture contribute to the common good, look into processes and physical outcomes and question how uh, can we improve the processes in order to form the ground for uh, better solutions, better outcomes. Uh, in 2021, we, uh, we are interested in working um, the, in relation with the FAP creatives and 2021 uh, Triennale. We are interested in working with, uh, with film formats. Um, with film and moving image, uh, short films documenting uh, specific uh, urban conditions. Uh, we are interested in looking into the scale of neighborhoods, uh, an holistic approach to neighborhoods in its physical, social and environmental dimensions, looking into the streets, concrete um, examples, uh, parks, meeting places, public spaces and potential spaces that are not um, also potential spaces that are not yet, um, let's say, programmed, but uh, in which there is a, the, but which have the potential to, to, to have a positive impact for the local communities. And we are interested in reflecting upon processes of transformation, which create more inclusive, accessible and different places for all. Uh, we have a project plan um, which uh, initiates now in, uh, in February and runs through October. So the public program um, is uh, scheduled to happen in October 2021. And um, in this plan, we will be working in close dialogue with, uh, with the creatives in order to, um, let's say, discuss and uh, provide assistance and help them to develop their, their projects. Um, and one last thing that I can say is that we are also in dialogue with the Copenhagen Architecture Festival, the Belgrad International Architecture Week and Maxi a Museum in Rome uh, with the aim to do a joint initiative um, since we all are, share this interest of working with, with film. Um, and this is it. This uh, very brief introduction to the ideas that we will be discussing. You can learn more about the Triennale and how we work in the film that you will also find on the FAP rooms. And now I pass the word back to Andreas that will tell us about the projects from the Swiss Architecture Museum. Andreas. Thank you, Alexandra. Yes, the Swiss Architecture Museum is the place where I work and my team work. And Interestingly enough, we have chosen um, the same theme, public space, for an exhibition that we're going to open in a very short time, actually on the 20th of March. And it's currently being built and it's something that we plan on for some time already. It's an exhibition on Sao Paulo's uh, um, social infrastructures, an exhibition that was developed by the um, Architecture Museum Munich and that we have uh, taken over and expanded on and um, yeah, added quite some, some installational components to it. And maybe I tell you a little bit how this ties up to, to FAP and to our museum in general. Uh, the, the theme of, of public space is actually very important for us as an architecture museum because I actually believe you cannot exhibit architecture in a museum it exhibits itself in the city, on the countryside or wherever. And this is the fundamental difference of architecture to art. I mean, one of the many that there exists, but one of the most important differences that is over overlooked very often is that while in art, you can actually exhibit the oeuvre that the artist is producing, a piece of sculpture, um, an installation, a painting, a photograph. You always have the full work on display. You cannot do this in the realm of architecture. We cannot exhibit buildings in that sense if we would agree that buildings are the oeuvre of, of architecture. You, you might contest that thesis, but in, in, a, in a kind of general understanding, most people would say that what architects produce are, are buildings, even if they actually just produce drawings and other people produce buildings. Um, but the funny thing is that we never exhibit the thing itself 
the space, the matter of architecture that surrounds us when we're inside a building, we can only exhibit uh, drawings, photographs, plans, models. That means representations of what we consider the oeuvre of architecture. The actual stuff of architecture is outside the museum. This is the, uh, the, the basic conundrum of any architectural museum that it, it is kind of alienated of its subject. It's a really interesting, frustrating and inspiring condition. It's frustrating because you, you're always detached from what you want to you know, convey. Uh, it's inspiring because it's forcing you to invent ways to allude to what you want to exhibit, but which you cannot simply display. So it's kind of playing billboard, I mean, you know, like a snooker, for instance, where you cannot hit the ball straight, but you have to play the ball against the wall and it has to rebounce and somewhat hit its target. So that's basically our job. We can never shoot straight. We always have to go around the things and make detours. And so for us, actually, the public space is maybe the most, you know, most natural medium of an architecture museum. It's actually where we would like to be all the time. And that's why we also do a lot of events and projects in the city. Um, we do bike tours, for instance, and go from building to building and take our audience with, with us and, you know, try to, uh, to make them enthusiastic about the stuff that's out there. And Switzerland is a great country for this because it has just an abundance of great architecture that gets you high, really. You don't need drugs, but they're also close by, by the way. Um, so the, the, uh, that's why public space for us is not just like a theme, like a side theme. It's actually our core medium where we want to work at. And so that's why we do this exhibition. And that's why we make a symposium, which is our FAP project for this year, where we work together with a really nice foundation that's called the Foundation uh, Br Brasilea Foundation. It's a funny uh, um, kind of game of words. Uh, the Latin word for Basel is Basilea. And Brasilea, of course, is then um, the kind of hybrid um, overlap between Brazilian culture in Basel and Basel itself. And this, uh, they have a very cool building by the Rhine and they agreed to, um, to host us for the symposium on the uh, 19th of June, that's when it is. And we have a whole day um, in there and they have a fantastic roof rooftop terrace and after the talks we can, you know, have a drink while overlooking the Rhine. And this I think will be really, really nice. And the idea is that we find out of the 25 or the, you know, the, the pool of young creatives, where you come from, um, uh, five speakers that can address the question of how public space performs today, how it is produced, how it is endangered, uh, what role it plays in society. And um, so that's a little bit the connection that we have. Uh, with the topic of today's discussion. Yeah, so I would like to give back uh, the uh, microphone <laughs> to uh, Alexandra, who will introduce the first speaker. Yes, thank you, Andreas. So we will uh, then uh, go for, um, forward with, uh, with the session, Maria uh, Ribeiro, hello. Uh, You'll be the first creative to present uh, your idea, the, the idea that you uh, proposed to the, to, the, to the FAP this year. So please go ahead. Andrew, hello mm. everyone. Thank you so much for having us and our idea presented um, at the Future Architecture FAP one. Um, I'm here representing Santos Collective and I'm presenting the idea of reclaiming public space and um, Santos Collective is a group formed by many people from all different backgrounds. You've got uh, business developers, architects, marketeers, artists, designers, um, all sorts really. And um, yeah, so I'm going to share my our video, video for our project now. Just bear with me.
Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Please, you can see the screen. See the screen. Okay. There we go. In March 2020, Lisboa, como toda a Europa, entrou em confinamento devido à pandemia do COVID-19. Todos fomos obrigados a ficar em casa e o comércio não essencial fechou. Somos o Santos Collective, uma entidade coletiva sem fins lucrativos, formada por comerciantes do bairro de Santos Velho, em Lisboa, com o objetivo de ajudar a nossa comunidade com iniciativas sociais. A nossa ideia surgiu como reação aos problemas a que vivemos em comunidade. Localizado no bairro de Santos, o Espaço Alarga surgiu para apoiar e promover o comércio local da zona, como resposta direta à redução da capacidade dos estabelecimentos comerciais locais. O Largo da Igreja transformou-se numa esplanada ao ar livre, aberta a todos. Um espaço seguro que se tornou na nossa sala de estar, mercado e restaurante. Aqui, no novo palco do bairro, Acontece atividades de caráter social, cultural, económico e educacional. Temos cada vez mais ideias para desenvolver a esplanada à larga e fortalecer a vida em comunidade no nosso bairro. Uma das iniciativas propõe um sistema de distribuição de produtos locais de diversos comerciantes dentro da comunidade. Um programa diversificado de tertúlias, conversas e apresentações para partilhar ideias, histórias e tradições. Para isto, propomos um mobiliário modular e flexível capaz de responder às diversas atividades. Assim como incluímos atividades locais, pretendemos expandir o diálogo para uma escala global, onde promovemos e debatemos temas relevantes da atualidade. A esplanada larga é mais do que um espaço, é uma landscape of care. Juntou pequenos e novos comerciantes, artesãos, produtores e moradores, com uma vontade coletiva e um objetivo comum de união. Esta responsabilidade social coletiva conseguiu revitalizar a comunidade de Santos num tempo difícil para todos. Acreditamos que é possível replicar esta ideia e levá-la a outras comunidades, criando assim uma rede de suporte mútuo dentro da mesma cidade. Thank you, Maria. And we, we can move then forward to the second uh, presentation. Nina, you have the word. Uh, hi. Hi, hello. I would also like to thank you for this um, invitation. Uh, and maybe just a short um, description. Uh, the thing I will be presenting is a part of my PhD uh, studies that I'm doing at the Faculty uh, of Architecture in Zagreb. And I wanted to say that because I usually work as a part of, uh, or as a collective, uh, and it's really um, strange to stand alone here today. But um, yeah, you will find out more uh, within the movie. 
So I will share my, uh, just a second. Yes, do that. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Yes. Okay. Možda bi bilo dobro u vas započeti Antonijonijevom izjavom zanimanje koje me nikad ne umara i gledanje. Moje ime je Nina, dobrodošli u moj dom. Ovo je moja obitelj, dvije mačke, osamne zbiljke, tristo knjiga i ostali predmeti. Dio sam ženskog dizajnerskog kolektiva Oaza i Zagreba. Svojom praksom borimo se proti ustaljenih normi promišljanja, surađujući horizontalno, saznati i željom. U nastavku slijedi fragmentalna prezentacija ideje, narativ prostora u filmu. Redatelj Želimir Žilnik kaže, film je prozor otvoren u svijet, a film je subjektivan. Apsolutne istine ne postoje. Narativi prostora u filmu vezani su uz reprezentacije i temeljita iščitavanja arhitekture i krajobraza. Ti prostori mogu biti stvarni ili umjetno izgrađeni. Komparacijom njihovih oblikovnih i značenskih karakteristika u novom jugoslavenskom filmu može se analizirati njihov utjecaj na čovjekovu percepciju, na njegovo iskustvo fizičkog okoliša. Jugoslavenski novi film javlja se u posebnom periodu birokratskog državnog socijalizma 60-ih. Ističe se zbog svojeg snažnog kritičkog stava, inovativne naracije i vizualne slobode koja ruši ustaljene estetske kanone. Ako građevine i gradovi projiciraju i čuvaju slike kulture i života, kako narativ prostora u filmu utječu na naše iskustvo stvarnosti? Kako arhitektura može služiti filmu? A kako filmski narativi mogu biti na usluzi arhitekturi? Kako je točno narative arhitektura upisuje u prostore, kako postojeće, tako i buduće? Kakvu vrstu afterlife-a film stvara za arhitekturu? Ljudska vrsta i tehnologija nepovratno su utjecali na prirodu i okoliš, te zato klasični modeli arhitektonskog promišljanja više danas nisu dovoljni. Arhitektura sama, bez suradnje s drugim disciplinama, ne može ponuditi substancijalne odgovore. Prema talijanskom arhitektu Giancarlo de Carlo, arhitektura je toliko neodređena disciplina da nikada ne može postati potpuno specializirana. Njezin izazov leži u neprestanom proširivanju opsega i redefiniranju uloge arhitekta. Poput filmskog redatelja, nova uloga arhitekta mogla bi biti prevoditelj prostora, čija misija je oblikovati nove narative za društvo. U potrazi za iskrenom arhitekturom, pravo otkriće putovanja nije u traženju novih krajolika, kao što bi rekao Prust, već u novom načinu gledanja, ako parafraziramo, u novom iskustvu gledanja. Thank you, Nina. And then we go uh, forward to Konstantin. This will be the last idea that we see. Before then, we start the conversation between all of us. Okay, Konstantin, please go ahead. Yeah. Um, one more time. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us. I'm uh, representing uh, here today um, a collaborative effort of two teams. 
the first project is uh, so called, called Sanatorium Premium. It's a, and it's a community of people and an Instagram project. And the, the aim of this project is exploring of um, kind of lost heritage of uh, uh, Soviet leisure. Uh, together we do uh, trips, uh, do research and promote and explore this heritage. And the second collective is uh, um, called Kultura. It's an architectural uh, uh, office and together we do um, all stuff related to space, um, architecture, narratives and stories. So now uh, I'll show you how it goes well. So there's no sound, Konstantin. Uh, what? There's no sound. Okay. But... Maybe it's nicer with. On That's the, true. On the view options, you can add. Okay. I guess it's still okay, but. It, there is no sound? No. No, there is no sound. We cannot hear it. So. On the view options on the top, you can share the computer sound if that helps. On the top of the screen. Um, we still don't hear it. But we can also do it as silent cinema. Uh, because we have the um, the subtitles we can, anyway. We can talk o over over it. Um. Uh, 
We still cannot hear it, Konstantin. So if there is any information that you think it's important to give in addition to what we are seeing? No. <laughs> Well, at least you, you, you saw half of it. Uh, yes, it we, we saw it uh, <laughs> and it had the subtitles, yeah. but uh, we missed the sound. Mm. Don't know, know why. Uh, it happens in this uh, uh, universe of Zoom sometimes. Um, okay, thank you very much. Then uh, we start the conversation. Andreas. Um, yes, so we thought... <laughs> We, we thought we can uh, basically maybe first go through the uh, three presentations one by one and sort mm -hmm. of add specific questions to it. Um, I would like to remind um, everyone in the room that you can ask uh, questions. Um, we basically will see um, a question that if you write it in the chat, okay? And then we can basically um, integrate it in our discussion. So if you have a particular question, just shoot it there and we'll try to take it in. And meanwhile, I'll, I'll start the discussion a little bit and we'll do it together with um, yeah. Alexandra. Um, maybe with Maria, when I saw your project, I had the feeling, okay, this is basically um, a prototype for what you can do with a public space uh, during the pandemic. And it's a one-off kind of thing. And at the end of your film, you say, well, this was really good and it could be replicated in other places, right? Also outside of the corona condition, I understand, right? This is not just a crisis management. This is um, an understanding or an idea for how to curate public space in general. Is that correct? Or was um, it really a Band-Aid for um, a corona condition? Well, th I think that's how it emerged and how it was a, a very... Uh, critical response to that mm -hmm. big problem that we were facing um, but at the same time I think because it has grew, grown to something a bit bigger and it's got stronger and stronger it has legs to keep going I believe after this and okay. yeah so my first question would be what does it take to have this running does it take a curator um, some sort of uh, facility manager that makes sure that everything works well, that people behave correctly, that there's not too many people there, that the selection of activities is well kind of composed. Um, what, I mean, who did that? And, or does it actually need that? Or does it outgrow itself? Does, it, does this activity also outgrow any kind of steering in this sense? And does the space eventually manage itself or is managed by the people that use it? I think it's managed by the people that use it and, and but very importantly, that obviously there's people uh, managing it uh, on a daily basis and making sure that everything runs smoothly, especially with all the measurements and stuff. Um, Who was that in, in, the, in the past? Was, it, was that you? I mean, your group? No, 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 not, not me uh, mm -hmm. personally, other people. And um, but I think it's because it's a collaborative project, it, it really thrives from having all of these different inputs. Like you said, for a cultural program, having a curator coming in, that would um, improve it always. And so I think it really relies on that sort of broader scope of, like I said, backgrounds that we have and that will contribute, that can contribute and will it's a, an evolving sort of group, so it's never it never staggers, I think. So, but uh, suppose that some someone of your audience who came to these events uh, said, oh, I like that, I want to have this too in my neighborhood. What would it take to actually replicate this? I mean, is there, a, the, do, do you need to ask um, the government, the, municip the municipal government for authorizations to use the public space? Or can you just go ahead and do whatever you want? There are um, some uh, measures that you have to um, talk to with councils and um, mm -hmm. yeah, you can't just take over. Mm -hmm. um, but if it benefits the place, then uh, surely, and, and if it starts happening more and more, then surely councils will be more um, uh, supportive of these uh, things to take place. And that's why if a city all of a sudden starts seeing 
all these pockets of communities that are really relying on these ideas, then they are, they are supporting each other in that sense as well, you know, of moving it forward to improve the city, um, I believe. You, um, I mean, it, it, uh, the whole thing takes place on a square in front of a church. Um, um, do you ask the church to do this? Yes, it was authorized by the church. Okay. Um, How did they uh, like this or not? They work very closely with the vicar and uh, he's great. It's very supportive and yeah. Okay. But it's not directly uh, connected, if you know what I mean, but it's very much supported by the that, mm -hmm. that specific church of that square. Yeah. Okay. So what are, you, what are your anticipations once we resume back to normality, if that is ever the case, or mm -hmm. the new normal, or whatever it will be after the pandemic? And hopefully there is an after. Um, do you think it will just continue? Well, that's what we hope for, yes. We, mm -hmm. we ask that question all the time. How will, will this um, sort of fade in a way or... Um, But I think it's, it's got so much potential to keep going um, and we will make sure or try to contribute always in ways of innovating. And um, Because once those people, once that local community feels welcomed and supported, mm -hmm. naturally they'll want to be part of that in a more long term. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, yes. Yeah. But that's the plan here. Yeah. Do you need money to do this? Yes. And um, I think there's a this concept of uh, social and collective responsibility is very much the core of this group. Um, and to sort of keep a sustainable um, way of doing things, um, that's very important. Yeah. But also rely, we rely on lots of volunteers as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. But, but did you have funding to do this, or did you just do this out of a whim and an instant kind of crisis response? Not that much funding from the council. No, um, mm -hmm. there was like just a group of people coming together and uh, mm -hmm. investing in this. Yes. The the With question is is basically important, but because I think public space seems to be always taken for granted, something that exists by itself somehow. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously we know that this is not really the case. So there is a um, support structure behind it in democratic societies, a municipal budget that thinks that these things are important, that public toilets are important, for instance, public benches are important, that there's a whole kind of infrastructure that needs to be paid for and maintained. Mm -hmm. And that somebody needs to uh, take care, as we would say. And do you think it's likely that you can convince the the municipal government of the vital necessity of that type of urban curating, that they would actually allocate uh, funds to, to produce these types of um, activations of public space in a systemic level. I really hope so. Um, are you doing that? I mean, are you talking to politicians and trying to- No, 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 no. Maybe that's the next step forward. Yeah. What? Thanks for the, for the suggestion. Um, yeah, but I think it's because it's um, a very localized um, um, a space still. Um, okay. I think the moving forward will be uh, incredibly more difficult, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it could start as just inspiring another community like this one. Mm -hmm. um, starting slower and sort of planting that seed and um, but but yeah pushing pushing it further and more um, in depth maybe that would be even more uh, helpful and more um, radical in a way. okay yeah. before we move on to the next project maybe you can can you say something about how you would like to use the the future architectural platform to develop this project further? Well, I think that this perhaps touches on that very thing that you were saying about um, 
creating bridges between the councils and the city, um, um, the people who actually make the sort of bigger decisions. Um, so I, th I believe that that would be a, 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 a good influential um, uh, bridge for, for us, definitely. And to show, but not, not just that, but also spread the idea, share the idea, and hopefully um, other people will feel inspired and feel like we, we can do this. It's mm -hmm. happened next door to us. So uh, what, what's stopping us? Mm -hmm. Okay. We don't seem to have any, any particular targeted uh, interventions from the audience at this point, apart from no. Joanna, who was commenting Omeo Deus, uh, but we <laughs> take this as, Apologies. A, as a compliment for you. <laughs> no, I guess, um, I don't know if I, if I should intervene here. Um, no, I'm, by all means, do. I'm also a member of uh, this project and um, yeah, it was some members of this project that were running uh, this uh, space um, and we were just trying to uh, feed more ideas to develop uh, the more social and cultural and educational agendas that we were presenting in this space. And um, I guess I just wanted to say that, you know, we wanted to be a part of the landscapes of care um, call for ideas because um, this, this was such a pertinent and such an important topic, especially in the context we are living in that, um, you know, like we all were affected by this pandemic. So it, it kind of creates this conscientialization that is more general with everyone and touches everyone. So I think this sense of collectivism for the community was really improved in the community of Santos because of the context we are living in. So I guess I would just say that um, it, it, it It was possible only because the community was super active, but it was in a way a space that was mutual. So it was a win-win situation where the community um, was uh, gaining a space for, a so for socializing and to be together. But then at the same time, they were supporting the struggling businesses because the space worked as an extension to uh, these businesses that would otherwise not be able to open. So I guess uh, I just wanted to add this. I don't know if it was mentioned, <laughs> but um, okay. I, I guess, yeah, there was just a, a part of, yeah, uh, you were asking some questions on um, how was this um, uh, space run? And obviously it was through the efforts of one of the members of the collective, especially Joana Bernardes. She was uh, managing all the events uh, and sharing them on Instagram. And then um, uh, Tiago and Alex were helping uh, with the management of who, which businesses would be presented in the space and really managing the finances. So everything was going into, it's a nonprofit uh, space. So all the money that was generated was reinvested in the space. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. but it was really important to have the support of the of the church and the support of the of the uh, council of Santush, because without them we couldn't have done this either. I think there's a question from the audience from Helen um, Ikla actually that, that relates to this topic. Um, she's asking whether you have actually considered crowdfunding as a as a as a potential economic uh, basis of creating funds, so to be more independent from. Um, you know, for instance, the church or the municipality, because it's mm -hmm. basically, it's a crowd activity, you know, so you, you have people coming together from all the neighborhood and they enlighten, they, they enlighten this space. Um, so crowdfunding would be almost a natural equation in terms of funding. They, they haven't done um, the crowdfunding, but the, there's a, a sort of a stream of donations that are encouraged and for specific purposes, but not the crowdfunding, no. Okay. Could you imagine that? Yeah, I, mean, I think yes. that would be a good, that would be, sorry to jump in here since I'm already in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but yes, I think there were moments where we, we considered crowdfunding, for example, um, during the most recent lockdown, there was a, uh, 
uh, these, these food distribution idea. So for that, you could donate, for example, on our page, we, we were selling these um, boxes of food and you could perhaps just um, donate money. So there wasn't crowdfunding in the sense, but there was donations organized, but crowdfunding is a really good point and we should really look into it. It's interesting because I'm just thinking of the fact that the exhibition that we do at the SAM, uh, because it's public space and it's called Access for All, and we actually are building a, an extra access ramp out of wood, di directing directly from the street right into the museum without passing through a foyer, um, we decided not to take entry. The exhibition will be free of charge. However, at the end, there is a donations box. And basically we ask people, you know, if you think this was worthwhile, your time, and you, if, you, if this was fun, uh, we, we welcome you uh, to support the, uh, the exhibition. And I think this, is, this can be actually interesting when we talk about public space, what is the business um, kind of logic behind this? Because obviously public space should be inclusive. It should have no thresholds. It should be accessible for everyone. And we know only too well that an entry ticket can be a door that is closed for some that just simply cannot afford it. And a museum entry in Switzerland can be pricey. So, and it definitely works in a way that it keeps certain strata of the society out of cu cultural spaces. In that sense, I think the, this question by Helen is, is very important. Uh, how can you empower a public space to become public and act as public um, without destroying um, the, the very logic of it, which is to be there for all. So I think it's probably a good thing for you to look into it, uh, mm -hmm. to, to not just romanticize the idea of public space, that it will just take care of itself because we, don't, we know it does not. Oh, it yes. needs us, all of us, right? Super. Yeah. Um, and it also incentivizes, I think it also incentivizes people to, who can be more generous, perhaps that would be even more than at the ticket price of the exhibition and mm -hmm. whoever cannot uh, afford to uh, give a big donation, then they will give what they can. And yeah, so I think that's, that's a really fun. good idea. Yeah. yeah. And mm. interestingly enough, uh, restaurants that have done the same thing um, uh, realized when they added the money up that they actually gained more money than if they had put uh, a menu with, uh, with prices on it. Because sometimes you just, you know, make people happy and they express that. Yeah. Um, there's maybe a, a more abstract question uh, that also, I mean, kind of picks up on your project. Um, um, there is the question from the audience somewhere. Um, what is the role of experimentation in urban public spaces in your projects? Including all the three projects, right? So not just the projects. That I see, I see, I see. Okay, well then maybe we can leave this question for later yes, for, when for we later. have introduced hmm. all of them. Okay, I think this hmm. is better. So I would say thanks um, um, for you now. And um, let's move on to the next project. Would you say so too, Alexandra? Yes, Anina, hello. Um, yes, I would like, to, I think, thank you very much for your presentation and um, uh, there is something you said in your project. So your project, you, you have this dimension of film and architecture and how film builds uh, narratives and suggests, suggests um, other meanings and perceptions out of the built environment, which uh, is constructed and is a carrier of, of uh, memories, let's say, as you said. And, um, and at some point, um, so I would like first maybe for you to talk a little bit about that, about these two dimensions, what is built and what can be, let's say, created and suggested uh, through film. Uh, okay, so uh, for me, it's very interesting this relation of uh, architects and filmmaker because I, I, I find it as a... Really Nina, could you speak a little bit louder? It's very low. I will try to. Much better. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, for me, it's very important this relation between uh, architect and filmmaker, because uh, I think that the both professions create narratives as well as collective memory that is important and that, that both professions um, held certain responsibility towards society by putting all these things um, 
uh, in the space. Um, and uh, so, um, yes, uh, uh, the thing about memory and what, what uh, the narratives in film create in our uh, perception of reality is something that I'm very interested in, um, in investigating more because we all are aware how, uh, for example, movies that we watch and, and spaces we never visited, uh, we, 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 we create certain perceptions of spaces that, that we never entered. And then my question is also, once we uh, approach to these spaces in reality, how much are these uh, visions of the space influenced by those images we created before visiting the spaces? Mm -hmm. and and what is our actual, uh, like, um, uh, authentic uh, experience? So these are kind of um, things that that like um, I'm interested in uh, in relation to uh, architecture and cinema. And also, um, for me, in in this particular uh, team uh, uh, that is like Yugoslav New Film, is also the question of is there a socialist landscape is, is there a social mm. uh, uh, is there like uh, also archaeology of uh, a moving image uh, or could we speak about uh, uh, heritage activism through film and and what 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 can we what else can we uh, read from the from the moving image, except something, except the the, the narration itself. Hmm. Um, I saw here that there is a question actually from Constantine. Do you want to uh, do, do you want to ask your question directly? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, I was like, thanks for for your presentation. It was quite inspiring in terms of. Uh, I like the images very much. And I was thinking uh, what um, all of them were, were rather old. And it's, uh, it also feels like um, uh, these kind of images are not possible in uh, today architectural uh, representation. And I was thinking maybe you can kind of reflect on it. Why don't we have so much mud and concrete buildings and, uh, you know, this kind of interactive uh, situations uh, anymore? Yes, it's a very interesting question. Thank you for the question. And I was thinking by, by doing this film, since I was using sequences from the uh, new, new Yugoslav new film, and then I was thinking like there are some uh, spaces that uh, at today we cannot even experience any more empty, you know, and, and also that's something that is interesting. And also uh, this architecture uh, or mud that we, we watch in these movies because they, they, um, they also uh, kind of problematize this relation between city and, and village. And, and, uh, and that's why, um, they have this specific, uh, 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 they, they uh, show specific landscapes that are full of mud. And, and, and then they also uh, kind of contrast this mud with, the, with modernization and industry that was coming uh, at that moment. Uh, that was kind of uh, something that was um, visible at that moment. Uh, and yeah, looking at them from from today perspective is uh, uh, it's challenging as well as you said. Like because we, uh, it, it's really hard to think of spaces like that that nowadays. And and I was quite thinking like if I would be a filmmaker today and choosing um, uh, certain scenes to film, it would be quite hard to find uh, those spaces nowadays, which is kind of sad because this, this heritage, uh, uh, existing heritage of, of modernist architecture in Croatia is quite um, devastated at this point. Like nobody, there are a lot of spaces that are not taken care of anymore. And we really don't take care so much about our heritage. And that's also another question that 
that like uh, is um, interesting to 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 um, to speak of while while watching those uh, images and while watching this movie. I'm not sure if I answered your question. <laughs> May uh, one one more uh, question. I mean, you you mentioned this um, uh, uh, moving from village uh, to the city. So this kind of uh, state of space was created by this kind of. Um, condition in between uh, village and the city. So maybe uh, this is my question for both of you, uh, uh, Maria and Nina. Uh, what do you think is the space in between today? Because like for me, it's most uh, kind of intriguing maybe uh, part. So we are not in between village and the, the, the modernized kind of city anymore, but still there are pr probably plenty of this type of uh, conditions. Um, actually, uh, maybe that's the most interesting condition to investigate um, spaces in between that don't exist or, or, or don't exist yet. Uh, super interesting question, Konstantin. Give me a few moments to think. <laughs> uh, maybe Maria has um, something to say. You're muted, Maria. You're muted. I didn't fully understand the question. Um, so you're talking about these um, in-between places, um, but what was it that um, you? So you were asking what? I mean, if, if, if you want to reflect on on a space, it's mm -hmm. interesting to go somewhere not that developed, like because, for example, the the square near church it's an amazing invention but it's rather old and we kind of know yeah. what, what it is you know you're talking about like and 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 there are maybe you, you can bring your events to kind of less conventional conventional uh, space in the city maybe some places uh, what needed them the most I know. Uh, you know I don't know. I think that's, I think that the difference here is uh, a sort of the density of a city, and the the extreme need to have these spaces, um, and where when you're further away from a city, maybe um, you'll find that more easily. But also, you're lacking the sense of community as much, maybe perhaps. Um, so yeah, so it's interesting to see uh, how they sort of flip, but. Um, so you get some some things, but also lack others. Um, in this and maybe all, yeah, and maybe all, also these questions they don't translate so literally into the different territories because different territories and different uh, contexts have different challenges and different let's say questions to address. Um, but Nina, I wanted to ask you something, uh, which is at some point in your film, when you question the role of the architecture today, you said something like, maybe the role of the architecture today, the architect today is more the one to create new narratives for society and not so much to build. And I think this, is, this was really interesting. And I was thinking about this also from the, let's say, environmental perspective when we know that you know, the built environment is also responsible for so much emissions. I mean, it's and that there is all, already so much that has been built already that, um, uh, that how can we also then reinvent or uh, let's say explore uh, possibilities for the, the role of the architecture in our contemporary society. So I'd like to ask you if you can elaborate a bit about Yes, that, that's true. Actually, we also spoke about it yesterday a bit with, with both of you about uh, this production uh, in environment that is kind of um, uh, violent. And, and actually, maybe, yes, maybe the, the answer is in, in, in uh, kind of um, um, in, in doing uh, more of a critical uh, work uh, with within the, the nature of a text, not not in uh, in in um, building itself. So so we also heard the lecture before this uh, today uh, that also kind of mentions the critical writing uh, about the architecture as something very important and the critical thought itself. So 
So yes, it's kind of re reflecting uh, upon that um, mm. that uh, 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 thought. Uh, uh, but also, I, I thought um, since uh, uh, we we had uh, uh, in Croatia during this pandemic time, we had earthquake as well, you know, and and then. Um, I thought how, how uh, actually is so strange what, after the earthquake, uh, uh, everybody was speaking about renewing and the facades and you know, like the, the, the look of the building, but nobody spoke about um, this, uh, this other role of the architecture or architect uh, uh, is kind of to, to comfort society in a way, you know, like to bring uh, some um, uh, uh, some uh, um, some some things into the spaces that don't exist yet. Not not thinking only about the the the, the formative side of uh, uh, of, of uh, buildings, more of of something that uh, Maria is doing with her. Like what what are actually the what will we bring into those spaces? Um, what kind of content? Uh, because I think society today needs more the content content than than the the, the form. The form mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, I think perhaps that um, that what you were saying about the role of um, sort of to create new narratives of the built environment is also a bit connected to uh, Constantin's project yes. um, of like the repurposing a space, um, such a grand space that already exists mm. and very much active back in the days and um, not nowadays not so much, but they still exist, they're still, still there and they could be, new narratives could emerge from them. So I think mm. that's really, but also Constantin mentioned these spaces in between, or maybe we could call them invisible spaces or, or some kind of unknown spaces, which is interesting to, to investigate if we speak about these uh, uh, landscapes of care, because like usually we are used to those um, spaces, like wh when we look at the cities and, and something that represent the cities, maybe it's interesting to think about those spaces that are not representative and they are uh, like, how can we find those places that, that will, new, new places that will represent uh, uh, new uh, cities in the future that are maybe not those uh, spectacular ones. And that's maybe something, as I understood, Constantin, your, your question before, um, Maybe yeah, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, 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 yeah, thanks. Um, now I, I'm thinking uh, about, uh, you know, this kind of connection between uh, a user and in an unexpected space. You know, I think this is what's also with this sanatorium thing is interesting for me because like when we do the video of young people, like something around 30, in, in this environment, it kind of, there is something new, you know, you don't know what expect because there is a kind of clash between two. Maybe it was something like, like this with factories, like in 80s, for example, like in Berlin, then kind of young people kind of introduce themselves to places about which nobody was kind of uh, thinking. And, you know, and they wasn't thinking about creating an industry, you know. And yeah, so it's just a port. Uh, um, yeah, but I think it's it's, it's important kind of um, to create a, and it's interesting to create a situation there, you know, there is a sense of something new or some kind of new potential. Hmm. Rediscovering or uh, reactivating a space maybe. Nina, one last question before we move to um, the project of Constantine. Uh, how do you see your project uh, escalating? Because your project is very much looking into a specific, a specific context. And how do you, in Croatia, how do you see uh, the project escalating into um, other um, situations, other uh, uh, contexts? Uh, uh, well... What kind, uh... what kind of dialogues could you 
Do you see? Uh, well, uh, definitely, I will move uh, also uh, into investigation of montage and those like film techniques uh, and how to transfer them in, into um, a dimension of uh, architecture that is not also new. But like, uh, uh, I would like to try to to approach it. Uh, through prism of my my um, practice and, and because I'm a designer, <laughs> I'm not an architect and mm -hmm. it's very interesting to to kind of um, investigate at the same time narration, architecture and film that are none of them are my uh, like uh, uh, primer um, uh, fields of study practice yes yes. Mm. So, so for me as being outsider, uh, kind of like outsider is uh, very interesting to, to um, try to, to find some, some new, new perspectives um, in this area. And uh, uh, in, uh, in relation to la landscape of care, I, I was very happy uh, to, to, to be part of this because uh, all these festivals that you have and that they they kind of uh, connect film and architecture are uh, definitely something I would like to be able to to approach to these like lectures and, and mm. uh, whatever is going to be organized mm. in the future. Okay, thank you very much, Nina. Uh, Andreas, do you want to uh, follow up with a question to Konstantin? Yes, I, I, I first have the question, are the structures that you, that you um, observe and, and, and catalog, are they all derelict? I mean, are they not in use? They are in use. They are in, in use? Yes. Okay. So, and you're studying how their current function is different from their original function. Uh, uh, now, I mean, uh, we kind of witnessing the, the changes and this is kind of one of our curiosities uh, because some of the infrastructure was kind of rebuilt into the hotels and um, but it doesn't work this well because it was built for in another society with kind of um, different economics. So, but what's interesting is it's still in use. So it's not abandoned infrastructure, but um, what's, um, there is a sense what uh, new generation, you know, people who kind of raised uh, in, in the time of global uh, resorts, uh, uh, don't uh, know this landscape, don't know how to use it. And there is a sense what this infrastructure in kind of recent years, maybe in a decade, uh, will decay uh, very uh, kind of fast. Okay. Is there already, can you already see that um, the different economical regime in which these structures are operated today lead to a modification of the spatial infrastructures themselves? Or are they respected for what they were produced? I mean, you have what you have. Uh, if you have a glorious swimming pool, you don't close it because, I mean, it's not uh, possible to build something like this in, in our days because of the economic kind of craziness of uh, these um, designs. So they, they basically just uh, use it. And also some kind of luxuries of this kind of uh, social state bring some difficulties because uh, uh, usually you have kind of great swimming pools, sport halls, uh, uh, lecture uh, halls, and they all need heating and repair and so on. And uh, often they, not, they, they don't need that much uh, uh, public space actually, but still, I mean, you, you kind of deal with what you have it's kind of hard to, to slice the swimming pool in two pieces. So, yeah. And this is also, you know, this kind of, what's important for me in this heritage is um, what a lot, a lot in this infrastructure is not kind of possible in our days economy, but we really can use what was created, you know, because uh, we all know how architecture um, kind of operate on economical level. 
and the design of the portal is it's quite a specific uh, thing, you know. So so you can't uh, build this type of structures anymore, but we still can use with this one, which already exists. And they are basically they're basically in operation. These structures and they're not uh, endangered in being modified or partially closed. I mean, some. I mean, I, like the answer is uh, you all your points are right mm -hmm. <laughs> because there are more than one thousand structures, and when you have such a number, you know everything is is right. Yes, yeah, some of them in the decay. Some of them are doing just well. Uh, some of them uh, operate on on the level what, which basically the same because they are kind of state owned or kind of state corporation or owned. Uh, and some of them were, were rebuilt into the kind of ugly photos. So, um, but generally, uh, they just stay the way they are and, and kind of sl slowly decaying. Mm -hmm. Nina? <laughs> and Maria also? I, I have a question. For me, it's um, super in interesting, uh, uh, the subject. And, and I wonder, because I, I guess before those places were kind of elite places, you know, like I, I guess um, like normal people could not really afford it or, or is it more like a common thing in Russia, you know, that people would use mm. those places? Is it affordable for like masses or, or how it works? I mean, uh, initially um, it's also kind of a, a complicated matter, but the basic idea was to produce infrastructure of care for all. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if, of course, in the reality, it was there are much more nuances uh, in the, uh, those statements. But um, um, we also kind of use, can use this heritage for our imagination today. I mean, maybe this is not that important to think in detail how it was kind of. Uh, done in, I don't know, 60s or 70s, but to, to use this sense of kind of massiveness of this infrastructure of care, it's kind of um, uh, locations and so on, uh, and to imagine something like this uh, uh, for, for our generation, because it was a part of industrial projects, like now we live in a kind of, I don't know, di digital uh, a digital revolution or something like this, and maybe we need something um, uh, uh, this, something similar, you know. But I wonder <laughs> if they still exist. Do do you use them some sometimes? Yes, you know, yes. It, this is this like, is what I do. This is the good part of this project, you know, because it's, right. it's basically <laughs> if you have a precocious project, you should need to do it on your weekends and. You know, on weekends you uh, want to have some rest, so we need to kind of manage to have both. Yeah, I also have a question on um, exactly that point, on how do you think you could use these places, um, uh, all the possibilities um, that you could use them? I think um, what, what is interesting for me to use this kind of strange context to in investigate um, what kind of new formats uh, of care can be created uh, because I think as a, like industrial workers, we, we also have some kind of special fatigue from our type of work of from our routine or the states of our cities. And uh, I, I think it's interesting to kind of re reinvent them, but not as a kind of uh, resorts or something because actually it's not possible but as mm -hmm. some kind of new uh, uh, new thing and but I think also what the, the, the big difference between kind of Soviet times or whatever and our days is what today we, we can't create just one answer to the question you know we, we need to create plenty of them because um, different contexts are, are different you know uh, yeah, but but but, but the, the general intuition is what uh, this kind of framework of regime of uh, of uh, technology of care of medicine inside these facilities, it's kind of maybe related to our day, and somehow be used uh, once again. 
And do you think you'd need institutions as a sort of a backbone for that or? Uh, so, sorry, what kind of institution? As, do you think as in, so to, to to sort of implement um, these all of all of these so different ideas, would you still need um, as, as as an institution, as in um, like a, a formal platform behind them, or do you think they could be a bit more um, your group, for example, taking over? I don't know how how that. No, no, be. no. I mean, we deal with narrative like route now. Uh, right now, what we are doing is uh, we are creating this uh, narrative, you know, which is not the same. Um, it's not a project like in, yes. like architectural project or consulting project or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. we we create in a sense for something. There is something important. There is certain special and uh, social conditions, and something may be done. And there are some reasons why it's awesome. This is what we do, you know, and kind of presenting it in, in a different ways and so on and so on. But then, of course, on the real kind of real conversation uh, level, we need to have a client institution or uh, something okay. solid to really deal with it. You know, if you want to construct or do consulting or do, you know, something which will be realized, realized in a solid ground. You know. mm -hmm. Do you think these, these places depend on the economy of uh, hospitals, sanatoriums, caretaking industry, or could they also be the support for some other use in case uh, this original program no longer, you know, sustains uh, these buildings? I mean, once again, everything is possible, but I think the, what the healthcare is uh, is uh, such a big issue to to give it behind is just uh, you know this is what what is important you know what what is care it's a healthcare you know it's a, it's the care of of your of your body of your mind and of course um, uh, it, this original function is uh, is a great one and it's. Also, what may, may, um, there is a difference between resort and uh, sanatorium. It's a, it's a healthcare. You know, this is a kind of strong site because you can go to resort and kind of have excessive drinking or something uh, fun, uh, which is different from your daily routine. But this type of um, uh, rest is already established, and it's not really care. You know. But we, I think we can use this infrastructure for something more uh, useful. Mm -hmm. I think the, the question also has to do with the fact of uh, how do we relate care and architecture in general? I mean, usually care is, uh, is used in a very specific sense in architecture when we talk about programs like in your project, hospitals and sanatoriums and other structures, elderly homes and so on. So it's usually always referred to or used with reference to a patient, somebody that needs to take care, needs to be taken care of. And so we, we built these kind of support structures that help people in need um, to function better or to become healthy again. Now, with this, uh, with this program here, Landscapes of Care, that concept, that notion of caring seems to be abstracted from this medical hospitalized context and apply to, you know, to, to society in general, to the territory also in general. And uh, I was wondering, um, how do you relate to that? Do you think this is, um, if, if we speak about landscapes of care in this generalized sense, who is actually the patient? I think what originally, and I think this is an, an innovation of a, a project from the beginning, what, uh, there is no patient, but there is a worker, you know, the, the basic unit of industrial economy. And I think it's interesting to, to kind of question who is a worker in our today economy and what kind of care it needs. But the, the idea what kind of, if you work, you need to be able to, to have access to infrastructure of care. I think it's pretty great still, you know, but the, the intrigue is to define what, what type of workers do we have in our today economy and what kind of 
uh, care uh, do they need yeah. and what kind of care can we provide? It's a question also to, to your other ones. It's really the question, mm. maybe to be more specific, who or what is it that needs to be taken care of in our contemporary landscapes of care? Mm. Nina, you need to unmute yourself. Sorry, I think we have two patients here, uh, society and the earth. I think all need care, all the patients in this um, formula need care. Okay, Maria, you were saying? Um, I think it's more, so, sort of our society is moving um, yeah, I agree with Nina, but I think our society now, that now and especially since the past year, is moving into a more sort of preventative space of care rather than uh, care as we know it. And so by emphasizing that preventative um, state, You mean prophylactic, prophylactic, so that you try... The to prevent something happens to the patient. Yes, exactly. So changing the ways that we live in, uh, changing the ways that we think about our cities, our societies, uh, to then improve that, um, um, mm. the care as we know it, basically. I think that there's a shift happening somehow. Mm -hmm. Yes, and in continuing this question, then I would like to ask, I mean, what can be the role of architects and urban planners, or what can be the role of architecture in addressing these questions of care? Also um, for the three of you. I mean, in East, we have at least uh, 2,000 buildings, which needs to be kind of reimagined in uh, special terms also. So this is a, this is a architectural task, quite uh, straightforward. Uh, but it's it's also like in my case it's also um, important to show the potential of something which is not that obvious maybe uh, sometimes and it's also a kind of uh, possibility to create special uh, narrative um, but it's obviously I mean if you if you deal with a complex um, uh, project you need a kind of complex uh, team of people. To, to deal with, uh, uh, to, to produce it, because like our days, uh, I mean, we can't uh, rely only on architecture as a matter of expertise to, to find an answer. Nina. Yeah, I agree with you, Constantin. And I said that in my, my video that like architecture definitely needs to collaborate uh, as it's supposed to uh, do. Uh, but I would also say that maybe uh, uh, the role of architecture today is, archi architect today is more complex because it's supposed to be also multiple role, you know? Like, it, uh, I, I think that's maybe uh, like as a narrator, as a translator, as a carer, so, so I, I think um, it's, it's more than ever very complex to, to, to be an architect and to take all these roles. Um, but also then in collaborating with other people and kind of sharing like and, and taking help from other professions is, is maybe um, the answer how that uh, multiple role could, could um, um, bring uh, best uh, results. Um, but, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say that I, I agree with what Nina was saying and that the role of the architect has to be, is to be more communicative and more collaborative for sure, to represent a bit more uh, the voices of those who it is serving or um, sort of providing. Yeah. I, I mean, know if, all of, all of you were basically pointing to the role of narrative um, as the kind of product of an architect's work in this context, um, which suggests that um, the ultimate contribution an architect can make to the landscape of care is producing narratives that help us maybe inhabit our, our, our given built environments in a different way. But what about building? 
I mean, uh, I like narratives uh, because although I work with architecture and space, I'm not an architect, so I don't do cut. And, uh, uh, but talking about nar narrative, I think it, this narrative shift is, is a part of the condition of our life today. It's not that good maybe in a way, but you, you, you don't have a commission to design just things, you know? You need, you need to communicate them, you need to promote them uh, to, to kind of get the commission. And this is, I, th I think in a way, but this is how things are, you know, you can be critical about it, but, but there is also some possibilities, you know, to, to create a broader vision uh, before the, the design. Yeah, but in the end, I hope we will create some, some buildings. Okay. Um... I was going to say that I think Joana and Inez would like to sort of maybe contribute uh, onto this a bit. I'm they're trying being, to add. They're being <laughs> taken care of in a different way now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I um, guess, sorry, I guess Maria was uh, directing this to me or Inez because we're both architects. Um, ah, okay. <laughs> but um, I, I mean, I think we, we can use architecture and um, even the built environment, be it outdoors or indoors, to frame uh, these narratives. So I think it's very important, the role of the architect in the sense that we, we can almost help create the stage and uh, for these, these, these narratives and these news, new ways of living um, that are so rooted in these notions of care. Um, but, and, but can you maybe say something about what is the role of building a new and building uh, and transforming existing structures or taking care of existing structures that might run out of uses otherwise. Definitely, I mean, I, mean yeah. I, I would say that, especially in the context we live in, in the climate crisis, it's more than ever important to reappropriate the buildings that we have um, and the spaces that we have. So rather than building new, if we have the structures to you know, like that Constantine's project to reappropriate spaces. Yeah. Um, I think that's that that should be the first uh, priority mm -hmm. um, for for architects. And I th I see I see this changing. Um, we are based in the UK, uh, working, and we see that there's targets for um, retrofit projects, and um, it, it more and more is we give value to projects that um, reappropriate the space and transform it into uh, its full potential. So I think that's the role of the architect is to see the potential and to make it happen. Okay. Uh, hi, uh, hi all. Uh, sorry to also jump in and to, but also wanted to say something about your question because it's really pertinent. And we have been talking about a lot about this new versus reuse. And I think it has to deal also a lot with program because we usually have this thing about we need to do a new building. This is the program and you design a building, focus on a program. And maybe we also should design, if we think about doing a new building, maybe it needs to start by that first thing of should the building be much more hybrid and it can be transformed into different things in the future. And actually, we usually, we have been working on projects that suddenly it is, imagine that it is the program is an office, but then in the future, if offices suddenly don't exist, they can become apartments, can be a residential building. So I think when you do new, you need to think about what is the program and how you design it. I'm much more in favor of reusing Obviously, because hey, Allah malto puti hoze date ko se to igra. Ayo. That was nice. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Natasha here. Uh, sorry to interrupt yes. you. Do you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, 
sorry to interrupt you, but uh, now it's four time o'clock and we have to finish. We have uh, to wrap up. Mm. Yes, and uh, yeah. I will, I'm kindly inviting you to the main room back where we were before this session, mm. uh, because very interesting entertainment program is now on. Okay. We, okay. we had we we were just trying to wrap up and um great yeah. great okay thank you because mm -hmm. uh, we have sound of sound of god there is a party it's happening this. in the other room it seems <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the party yeah. just started in the main room but um uh, yep, I would, uh, from, I think that, uh, thank you very much for sharing these ideas with us. Thank you very much for, um, for um, your uh, uh, inputs in the discussion. Um, I think it was interesting to understand the, the, this, this, to understand how these three uh, proposals approach public space in, uh, I mean, with some common aspects, but in also with very uh, different uh, uh, perspectives. And that's, that's quite, um, that is quite uh, interesting uh, to see. Um, Andreas, I don't know if you want to say something as well. No, I guess this discussion will not end here, obviously, no. but um, I learned from it that um, maybe the role of reprogramming the already existing plays an important role in this discussion of how to take care of spaces, territories, people, maybe more than the production of new structures. Uh, this also has, I think, to do with our demographic situation today, where we have a built stock that was made for more people that sometimes we have now. Um, um, also, I think the fact that, that our societies are over aging is I think an important um, element in this as well, which is very different in places like Africa, for instance, where the population is super young and they are the entire, let's say, geography of, 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 of care is, is completely different. What, what they need is structures for young people. What we need is uh, oftentimes structures for aging people, us basically sometime soon. And um, so I think this is, this is interesting. And I think the, uh, the, the, the emphasis that you put on the notion of narrative was also kind of significant. And maybe we will find different different trajectories in the coming days uh, to, to continue this reflection. So thank you for the uh, initial inspiration and hope to follow it through and see you again uh, at yeah. this party and other places. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah. All right then. Bye-bye.